afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Hogan. I'm National Director for Fire and Emergency Management uh, in the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government. Uh, we're designated as Lead Government Department for coordinating the response to severe weather emergencies at national level. And we've been working since Thursday afternoon with Metair and other government departments and agencies uh, when the threat posed by this tropical storm began to emerge. We have currently red level warnings in place in Kerry, Cork, Clare, Galway and Mayo. This morning, Wexford and Waterford were added to that list, and others may be added also. So we're encouraging people to monitor the weather forecast, Met Aaron's statements. The nature of the extreme weather conditions are expected to be comparable with, or perhaps to exceed those of Hurricane Debbie in 1961, when 11 deaths occurred uh, with a similar type storm. The swathe of the area affected by the storm may exceed 100 kilometers, but again, I'll defer my colleagues from Met Aaron will give us more detail on that. <coughs> in either situation, we're facing an extreme weather event here in the country tomorrow. Uh, the red warnings are in place for a number of counties with orange level warnings on the rest. So everybody in the country needs to take heed of what is coming tomorrow. The storm is coming and passing this way tomorrow. Our primary concern here today has been public safety. You will already have heard messaging from the Road Safety Authority and from DSB about the dangers that can occur in their area. In all the areas where the red warning is in place, the red warning means that you need to take heed and take action to protect yourself, your property and your family in your own area. Because of the duty of care owed to children and to avoid the risks from travelling, we are strongly advising all schools and childcare facilities not to open tomorrow in the red counties. School transport will not be operating in red county risks uh, due to the risk to children. In the orange areas, we are avoiding people also to take care, great care, and my colleagues here, we will call a number of people to speak uh, to take about the safety messages uh, that we want people and the issues and things that we want to heed. First of all, perhaps what I will do now is call Evelyn Cusick from Met Aaron to give us an update on the weather. Thank you, Evelyn. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, Met Aaron took the unprecedented step yesterday of issuing a status red warning, which is greater uh, in advance uh, of greater than 48 hours. So we issue very few red alert warnings, and certainly we, we, they're always within a 24 hour period. But uh, along with the National Hurricane Center in Miami and the British Met Office, we have been monitoring this uh, rather unprecedented um, track of Hurricane Ophelia. And just some statistics, only 15 hurricanes have passed within 200 nautical miles of the Azores since, if you like, scientific monitoring of these hurricanes in 1851. So it's tracking just past the Azores at the moment, pretty much passed over it. And uh, as I said, there's only been 15 recorded within 200 nautical miles. What's happen what happens generally is that uh, they're called easterly waves. Clusters of thunderstorms come off uh, the central equatorial zone of Africa. They move westwards in the trade winds past the Cape Verde Islands and then continue westwards. And as they meet the very hot tropical oceans in the Caribbean, with, you need a minimum uh, uh, sea temperature of 27 and a half degrees Celsius. They spawn into hurricanes there. But this one is uh, very unusual in that it's, it's come just slightly westwards but has taken a direct track northwards. So I would like to show you um, two charts here, which look a little alarming, and that's because it is an unprecedented uh, weather situation. So uh, the one here is the measure and high resolution model. Sorry, the, uh, this one here is the high, the measure and high resolution model. So uh, as you know, we model the atmosphere by using the laws of physics, and a high resolution model means that we calculate the weather, the expected weather at a uh, very high resolution, as the name implies, and it's every two and a half kilometers. And there's a uh, very high uh, modeling of the orography across Ireland. 
So just uh, run uh, up here is the uh, broadcast time. So this is now Sunday. So we've more or less a flat calm at the moment is the calm before the storm. And then if you can have, use your two eyes, here's Hurricane Ophelia. And this track here is up along the west coast and moving towards Scotland. So again, I'll just run that sequence through. And the legend here are the winds. So uh, I know you, you know, you're used to met Erin issue and gale warning. So gale force 8 is a mean speed of 34 knots. So the orange area is a gale warning. But uh, this, the definition of a hurricane is uh, a mean speed, a 10 minute wind speed of 64 knots. So unfortunately, or quite alarmingly, you can see some purple uh, being forecast in the winds. I'll just look at it again now. So again, it's calm at the moment, the calm before the storm. So you can see here, it's purple suede things. So there's hurricane force 12. So the Met Air and Sea Area forecasts have uh, hurricane force 12 in our, in our uh, general sea area at the moment. And as uh, Sean just said, we've started red warnings out from western and southern coast. And in addition, uh, this, view, this view here is uh, wave, wave heights. So Ireland, so we've just frozen it here at 12 o'clock. So we expect exceptionally high waves to be pushed up along the south coast, causing coastal flooding at the very least, uh, say, uh, and a swathe from Kerry over to uh, Wexford. So that's why, as Sean said, we've extended our status red warnings this morning to include uh, um, Waterford and Wexford, and primarily for the reason that we expect uh, coastal, significant coastal and marine damage. So I think that's okay. okay. And so we're facing a number of hazards here. Uh, there's obviously there's the wind, uh, the actual damage that they can do, and obviously we've seen what wind does in terms of uh, the ESB networks and in terms of. Uh, trees down, disrupting roads and transport and, and traffic. We're also facing, as, said, as Evelyn has emphasised here, the coastal damage, and I'm going to call Jim Casey from OPW to expand on that one a little bit, because obviously that links very much with the tidal conditions uh, around the country, and as well as that then there will obviously be severe rain associated with this, so that may bring a threat of flooding as well. So those are the impacts we're expecting from this, but I call Jim Casey from OPW now to speak on the coastal Thank tidal. you, Sean. Good afternoon, everyone. Just to report on behalf of OPW the current situation. Um, Monday, uh, tomorrow, um, we have been monitoring sea levels and storm surge conditions at OPW for the past few days. Yesterday, we issued a high surge advisory to um, right throughout the country um, to all local authorities and relevant stakeholders highlighting the severe surge conditions that we're expecting, um, mostly um, coinciding with high water in the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, severe surge levels uh, above 0.75 of a metre and upwards towards a metre of surge, which is very significant. Now, normally uh, we are on a leap cycle of tides at the moment, so under normal conditions we, we wouldn't have concerns, but given the severe storm surge, it's pushing those leap tides closer to the higher end of the spring cycle, so highest astronomical tide and slightly above. Um, I would say also, uh, I'll list out the affected coastal areas in a moment, uh, but in addition to the storm surge, we will have uh, wave setup, which is pushing sea levels slightly higher due to the very severe wave conditions, uh, perhaps uh, between 0.1 and 0.2 of a metre, uh, even higher. Um, the affected areas include the coastlines of counties Mayo, Galway, Clare, Kerry, uh, Cork, Waterford, Wexford, and also in the northeast, County Loud. Um, there is a a significant risk of localised coastal flooding associated with those elevated sea levels and uh, wave overtopping. And the local authorities will be familiar with the areas likely to be affected at a more local level, um, but they will be areas that have deeper water closer inshore, and the high sea levels uh, will allow larger waves to penetrate close inshore 
and give rise to wave overtopping in localized areas and uh, the risk of coastal flooding. Uh, OPW will issue and update the situation later on this afternoon and issue a further high surge advisory to all the relevant local authorities and stakeholders. Thank you. Uh, our priority at our meeting today is uh, people's safety. As I say, Hurricane Debbie, the, the comparable event that we're looking at here, uh, killed 11 people in, in 1961. Um, so essentially what we're asking in people in counties where there's red warning, and say, this may change, so please do keep in touch here, particularly in the counties where there are, are red warnings. For your own safety, do not expose yourself to danger by being, being out when you do not need to be. Uh, we're expecting extreme wind conditions here, uh, much more severe than anything we saw in the winter of 2013, 2014. And although it will pass through relatively quickly, you know, in three to six hours in any given area, and will clear the country tomorrow effectively. So we are asking people, just bear this in mind. This is a safety issue, a public safety issue. And we're asking people working in essential services, obviously, to adjust their, to plan their arrival and departure from work to avoid in the particular areas where they are, to avoid the worst uh, of the storm. Do not be out in the storm is really our message here today. Uh, can I ask uh, Paul from Garda Corner here to speak uh, about road safety? Obviously we're concerned about safety in a number of areas, but road safety is one of them particular. That's my colleague from Garda Corner, please. Good afternoon. Oh, uh, with this severe weather warning, uh, we in Garda Corner have serious concerns about road users especially cyclists, pedestrians, motorcyclists, and trucks. These vehicles are vulnerable to high winds and the heavy weather conditions that we are probably facing uh, in the next day or so. Um, we would ask everybody just to consider their journey. Is it necessary <coughs> to plan for any eventuality and to consider the local conditions that you have uh, all around the country? Uh, we'd ask you to check regularly with Metairn and all the news media agencies and consider what the area, your area is at the time of any journey you might be thinking about. Um, we'd ask you to also to secure your local properties, your own property, make sure everything's safe and tied down if possible, and also check in on vulnerable neighbours, any elderly or anybody like that, especially in these red air warnings, please. Um, thanks. Thank you. Obviously, <coughs> this air uh, storm like this is severe impact on the marine environment, and I'd ask Eugene Clone, the director of the Coast Guard, uh, to, to say a little piece about that. Eugene, you might update us on where you're at. Good afternoon. My concern is shipping safety. Uh, I was over in the Marine Rescue Coordination Centre this morning. The fishing fleet are, are going into shelter. Shipping is staying off the coast. Ports are battening down, waiting for the storm to come tomorrow. My main message here today is public safety. For those members of the public, my advice, my strong advice, is to stay away from the coast. Stay away from harbours, stay away from promenades, stay away from, from cliffs. And the message I'm going to send there is to remember to stay dry, stay high, and stay away from the coast. Thank you. Okay. And for the impact of the storm in the general transport sector, I'm going to invite my colleague, uh, Eddie Burke, and his colleague from uh, Bus Air and John Sheridan to, to talk to us about the general impact we're expecting in terms of the transport sector. Eddie, please. Thanks, John. Um, I suppose the, the severity of the, the weather that's forecasted, uh, transport and transport networks uh, will be disrupted. But the people just need to keep in contact with their transport provider, keep in contact with websites uh, and with so social media. Uh, airlines and uh, ferries are, are monitoring the situation. They will make decisions as the, the forecast evolves. Uh, public transport, bus networks and train networks, they all have procedures in place. They will monitor the situation, but people can expect delays tomorrow. So we just ask people to keep in contact with their, with their service providers to be aware of what's happening. Thank you. Okay, uh, can I ask Derek, Hine, Derek Hines from ESB Networks to speak then about uh, ESB and safety in relation to ESB in particular? Thanks, Sean, and good afternoon, everybody. ESB Networks has been escalating our preparedness level for Storm Ophelia since the middle of last week. We do expect that storm Ophelia is going to have some impact on electricity networks and our customers over the course of Monday. Based on previous experience of events, particularly in 2014, when storm Darwin resulted in the loss of electricity to a number of customers for a number of days, 
we are forecasting that we will have some damage on our network over the course of the next 24 or 36 hours, predominantly due to falling trees. While this will result in a loss of electricity to our customers and disruption to people's lives, we are here primarily today, like everybody else, to put a public safety message very clearly to all citizens of Ireland. What we're asking everybody is to stay safe by staying clear of any fallen wires. Whether you believe them to be electricity wires or not, we ask you to stay safe and stay clear. We ask all of our customers and all members of the public to contact us at 1850 372 999. That's 1850 372 999. If they do see any electricity or other wires on the ground, please stay safe, stay clear. We expect on Tuesday to have sufficiently safe weather conditions to be able to prioritise the respiration of supplies to our customers. Our focus over the next 36 hours will be making situations safe where wires are on the ground. We will provide updates as the week progresses through the National Coordination Group and through our website and our Power Check app. So if anybody has any queries at any point, please contact us through any of those means. As well as the public safety issues, we've also been considering the likely impact of the storm as it passes over the country. <coughs> as I indicated earlier, uh, our strong advice is that schools and childcare facilities uh, should not be opening tomorrow to coincide with the arrival of the storm. Uh, it will be a highly dangerous situation. So I'm going to ask my colleague from the Department of Education, Tom Began, and perhaps John Turton from School Transport Service to speak on, on, on that particular issue. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, as Sean has said, um, schools in the areas affected by the red wind alert are strongly advised to remain closed tomorrow. It's always the department's advice and guidance that um, schools in areas affected by a red alert concerning wind would consider closing. This is an unusual situation in that Met Aaron gave a 48 hour advance notice of the red alert in the affected counties. School transport, as is their policy, said there would be no school transport services in those areas. Um, so following on from that and following on from the decision at this meeting, we've now decided to strongly advise all schools in the areas affected by the, the red wind alert to remain closed tomorrow. Good afternoon. <clears throat> As you've been hearing over the past 24 hours, uh, and in line with the policy surrounding the red weather warning, bus air and school transport services will not be operating tomorrow. That's school transport services operated by Bus Aaron, and in fact, the school transport services contracted in to operate for Bus Aaron as well. Um, we first heard about the, or the, the possibility of the red weather warning on Friday, and in light with that, we circulated the policy around to those who were concerned, those being the parents, the schools, the drivers, and the contractors operating on our behalf. And the reason we did that um, was more advisory, and should the red weather warning be confirmed, uh, that people may have time to make alternative plans. When it was confirmed yesterday morning that there is indeed a red weather warning for the counties, uh, we circulated the media release. Um, I'd just like to add that the bus air and scheduled services, road passenger services, at the moment are scheduled to operate tomorrow morning. However, it is dependent of what happens. It is extremely fluid. Uh, and for the most up-to-date travel information, I would suggest <coughs> that people looking to travel uh, reference the website, busair.ie or indeed the Facebook or Twitter feeds. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, could I ask Brendan Lawler from the Health Service Executive, please, to speak about what the expected impact in, in uh, the health sector is? Brendan. Good afternoon. Um, as has been kind of pointed out here, this is a severe weather warning, and uh, the HSE is taking it quite seriously. Um, we have services at this moment in preparation in the areas that are affected where, where our crisis management teams are actually meeting to uh, review our practices over the next number of days. Um, where decisions are made on this, they will be um, circulated through the media and direct contact with clients as well will be had. We ask that no unnecessary travel is taken, that if you um, have medical appointments and things like that, please consider are they necessary to take uh, these over the next few days or during the time the red warning is in place. Um, 
please have supplies of medication and stuff that you would acquire uh, in advance of um, this storm hitting. Um, and we ask for people to check on their vulnerable relatives and neighbours prior to, during and after the onset of this um, severe weather event. Thank you. Uh, the agriculture sector are always ex uh, affected uh, extremely by severe weather conditions. So I'm going to ask Dermot Byrne from Department of Agriculture to say, particularly again about the safety ones, Dermot, please, if you don't mind. Thanks, Sean. Uh, my name is Dermot Byrne, representing the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine. I think we'd have two messages at this point. One would be building on a message to get an area on by the Garda Chicana, would be at farms, make sure that any uh, loose material is tied down as best you can, the best farmers bring it inside or whatever. It's just in the severe weather, something heavy could be coming by the dangerous missile affecting property and, and people. And the second also message is not, very natural for farmers to want to check up on their buildings and their, and their stock and their herds. And if they're going to do that, certainly of course, they, 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 they want to do that, will be to go out uh, accompanied by someone, uh, and preferably not to, to go alone because it is looking at quite a severe uh, weather extent. Thank you. As the lead government department for coordinating the response to severe weather, we've been working with the local authorities uh, since last Friday, and many of them are having their own local coordination group meetings this morning uh, in advance of the storm's arrival tomorrow. As I say, the expected impact uh, in counties is very significant, and local authorities have been issuing information, and we encourage people to look at their local authorities' website or Facebook pages uh, to make note of the contact numbers because local authorities will be uh, staffing their phone lines uh, and taking calls from people who need assistance uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday, as the storm passes through. Please also make note of the SB Network phone number that, that uh, Derek gave out here and have your uh, local authorities' emergency contact numbers and make sure, of course, that your phones are fully charged uh, tonight. Um, in general, the public authorities will not be exposing their staff to danger when the storm is raging in the particular areas. But obviously, if you do have a life-threatening situation, uh, Ring 999 or 112, uh, local authority fire services will be responding to, to issues depending on particular situations uh, that, that do actually exist. In addition to the local authorities' preparation, and we've most recently seen that, as was in Donegal and the flooding that took place in Inchon Peninsula on 22nd of August, uh, our Defence Force colleagues uh, are preparing to, to come to the assistance. We won't know until the storm passes after tomorrow, uh, but we are anticipating that very severe damage may be caused. So we've been working with our Defence Forces colleagues, so could I ask Colonel Dave Dignan, please, to give us a short update, Dave, on where you're at. Thank you, Sean. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Defence Forces yesterday deployed troops to Tralee, County Kerry, in response to a request from Kerry County Council. Uh, they've been tasked with filling sandbags as a contingency measure in the event of localised flooding, and that effort will continue into today. Uh, in addition, the 12th Infantry Battalion, based in Sarsfield, Barracks and Limericks, has today set up a task unit. This task unit will deploy to Tralee and will be in position at 0530 hours tomorrow morning. In addition, we're also standing up troops in Cork, Galway and Kilkenny, ready to respond in the event there's a requirement from the local authorities in their areas. We're also standing up engineering assets in Collins Barracks, Cork, this engineering unit will include pumps, plant machinery, chainsaws, boats and generators all ready to deploy in the event that there's a requirement for that sort of capability. The Defence Forces stands ready to deploy additional assets if and when called upon by the primary response agencies. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I think we'll take questions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're ready. Can I ask the spokespeople who have been speaking here, please, if you don't mind stepping forward just to be here so that you can direct questions uh, <coughs> and we, we can direct them to whoever you like. So we'll take any questions you have. Sean, could I just ask, um, uh, obviously school children won't be going uh, to school tomorrow. Should, should workers uh, go to work tomorrow and should students go to college? And if possible, should they stay at home? Uh, the, the advice that we're saying to everybody, I think, is very clear. You should not be travelling, you should not be out in this storm. This is an extreme weather event. This is, you know, Hurricane Debbie killed, uh, the comparator that we're talking about, killed 11 people back in 1961. We do not want to be here on Tuesday with reports of, of deaths is, is our primary concern. So what we are saying to everybody, uh, do not be out in the storm. Now, 
you can that storm is going to move over time so you can judge and please keep in, watching the information provided by Metairn for when the storm is going to be at its worst in your area it will pass I think it's fair to say it? relatively quickly three to six hours will pass through most areas so and again those in essential services will be asking those for sure to make sure to adjust their travel times to and from work not to coincide with the worst of the storm anybody want to add so, you know, but, but, but does that mean, I mean, is the advice for, for employees, is it to stay at home and not go to work? Uh, don't be travelling. Do not be travelling at, at the, when the storm is at its worst in your area. And I think even in the orange areas as well, I mean, when the focus has been primarily on the red areas, please be aware in the orange, severe, we're looking at severe conditions. Yeah. So, um, if you come into the morning, <laughs> sorry, I don't think it's Oh, yeah, cause, no, but I want to point you, so, um, it's, uh, it's a rapidly moving storm, so storm force winds uh, may not affect everywhere, but any particular area we're talking about, a three hour perhaps window. So um, it's, it's a moving situation. So the heaviest of the winds would be uh, hitting, if you like, the Kerry area maybe at between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. and then clearing the northeast maybe Antrim by 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So it's a really rapid storm track right up across Ireland. Now there's still some degree of uncertainty as to the exact track. So what we have here is called a deterministic model. It gives an exact track, but we run uh, other different possible scenarios. So if there is a slight possibility it could track up along the east coast, but at this stage it looks like it's either going to move up the center of the country or just on the west coast which means that the east coast would be spared the heaviest of the rain, for example, and that the heaviest of the rain could actually stay right out in the Atlantic. But at this stage, it looks like the heaviest of the rain would be from Kerry up to Donegal, that sort of 50 millimeter area, but maybe more, maybe less. Just ask, um, uh, obviously, school children will be going uh, to school tomorrow. Should, should workers uh, go to work? Tomorrow, should students go to college? Uh, if possible, should they stay at home? Yeah, the, 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 uh, the advice that we're saying to everybody is very clear. You should not be traveling, you should not be out in the storm. Uh, this is an extreme storm. weather event. And again, that's very you know, important. Hurricane Devin killed the park. We're talking about 11 people back in the Yeah, I mean, it's a similar situation. We do not want to be urged to report some updates. It's our primary concern. So what we are saying to everybody, do not be out in the storm. Now, you think that storm is going to move over time, so you can judge and if please keep watching the information provided by Metair. When the storm is going to be at its worst in your area, it will pass, I think, it's very safe, relatively quickly, three to six hours, will pass through most areas. So, and again, those in essential services will be asking those for sure to make sure to adjust their travel times to and from work, not to coincide with the worst of the storm. Anybody want to add? Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 But does that mean, I mean, is the advice for, for employees, is it to stay at home and not go to work? Uh, don't be travelling. Do not be travelling at, at the, when the storm is at its worst in your area. And I think even in the orange areas as well, I mean, when the focus has been primarily on the red areas, please be aware in the orange. Severe, we're looking at severe conditions. Yeah. So, um, if you come into the morning, sorry, I don't think Oh, yeah, no, but I want to point you to um, it's, uh, it's a rapidly moving storm, so storm force winds uh, may not affect everywhere, but any particular area we're talking about, a three hour perhaps window. So um, it's, it's a moving situation. So the heaviest of the winds would be uh, hitting, if you like, the Kerry area maybe at between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. and then clearing the northeast maybe Antrim by 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So it's a really rapid storm track right up across Ireland. Now there's still some degree of uncertainty as to the exact track. So what we have here is called a deterministic model. It gives an exact track. But we run uh, other different possible scenarios. So if there is a slight possibility it could track up along the east coast, but at this stage it looks like it's either going to move up the centre of the country or just on the west coast, 
which means that the East Coast would be spared the heaviest of the rain, for example, and that the heaviest of the rain could actually stay right out in the Atlantic. But at this stage, it looks like the heaviest of the rain will be from Kerry up to Donegal, that sort of 15 millimetre area, but maybe more, maybe less. Are you expecting the worst storm since 1961 or something? From our perspective, it, it's a comparable, uh, comparable storm. Uh, I think that's kind of comparable. We're looking at hurricane uh, force 12 type storms. And again, that's varying up and down as I understand it here on, on this one. So, so we don't know. We won't know. We, we won't know. Yeah, I mean, it's a similar meteorological situation. If you're asking about the effects, it's hard to predict those. Uh, it's, a, it's an unprecedented uh, storm track across the Just, I know there's two ministers of state here, so maybe they'd be better to transfer fetch, but um, this is, uh, insurance companies are going to say that this is a god, uh, uh, this is something that they couldn't uh, account for, so there's going to be a lot of homeowners and businesses who won't be insured uh, due to the damage caused. I mean, can, can we have a commitment that a fund will be provided for anyone who ends up... Uh,